This is not a political battle we're fighting. This is a battle for the soul of America, and it's a spiritual solution that we need to see. So that's what we're pushing for. And you and I know exactly what needs to happen, and that's a nation turning back to God instead of where they're heading. In fact, no, no segment of American society or American culture is not affected like the war on children. Well, there's a new War on Children documentary that features whistleblowers, survivors of child mutilation, trafficking victim, Senator Rand Paul, Riley Gaines, Pastor Amon Chukwu, along with drag performance and corporate executives exposing the plan to sexualize your children. This is an amazing film. I want you to watch the trailer. It's just a portion, watch. Are they intentionally sexualizing our children and stealing their innocence? I think that's right. TikTok specifically is designed to target young people. That's who their audience is. Have children died because of social media? Absolutely. Have they been trafficked off of social media? 100%. Have they been sexually exploited off of social media? Ongoing, yes. I'm scrolling on TikTok. I see little kids with TikTok. What are they looking at? The big tech companies at this point are essentially aiding and abetting human traffickers and people who are working to exploit children. Absolutely. If you don't want to hear it in a school board meeting, why should children be able to check it out of the school system? There is misinformation presented that somehow that we're doing surgery on minors or even children, and that simply is not true. How old were you when they gave you a double mastectomy? It was a month after my 13th birthday. Ultimately, we're going to talk about, are they going to give, the counselors going to give them medication there at school without their parents' permission? I mean, I think we're leading towards an absurd and horrific time. Well, first of all, we weren't forewarned we would be sharing the locker room. We had no idea. I turned around, a six foot four, 22 year old man, fully intact with an exposing male genitalia. This ideology is killing our kid. Do you think more people need to speak up to protect kids like your daughter? Yes, I do. Well, I think from heaven, she can see how hard you fought for her. Do you feel like this is a war on children? I know it's a war on children, but like they said, we're coming for your kids. Yeah. And they have. All right, this groundbreaking documentary was recently released by Robbie Starbuck and his wife, Landon. Robbie's not only, if you don't know who he is, he's not only an influential producer and director, he's also a committed Christian, patriot, and a father of three who's actively engaged in the battle to protect our children. Robbie, welcome to Flashpoint. So glad to have you here, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys shining a light on this important film. Yeah, it is. And, and may I say here, I, we have seen this, and uh, it's, I'm telling you, everybody, you need to go watch this. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. They tell it like it is. But what I especially appreciate is how you lay it all out, how we got from, got from there to where we are today. Because, Robbie, most, uh, most Americans, in fact, most people in church, we woke up one day and we're, we're, we're playing catch up to what's been going on in our society. What was the most, uh, uh, why, first off, why did you make the film? I know it's an obvious answer, but what pushed you to go ahead and make this documentary? Well, it may not be as obvious as some people think. You know, my my far out background uh, job wise was I directed Oscar winning actors, actresses, some of the biggest music stars. And then I came out as a Christian conservative um, around the 2015 election going into 2016. And I knew what that meant, you know, uh, but my family came here from Cuba. You know, my mom came here, a penniless refugee that came the legal way to this country, despite the risk of death and everything else. If she could do it, risking all that, I think other people can do the legal route as well. Um, knowing what communism does to a country, I feel a duty as a father and as a member of my community to do everything possible to make sure that a new form of communism doesn't destroy this country. Uh, because communism doesn't just come for a country and its values and its children, it comes for its faith. And, and faith is paramount to dividing, you know, and that's why they attack it. They want to divide us by breeding a faithless generation. And we cover that in the movie as well. You know, we have this insanely high mental health crisis going on right now among the youth. But at the same time, what's paralleling with it? the least belief in God that we've ever seen in a generation. So it was very clear to us, uh, my wife and I as parents, that we had to do something to tell this story so that people understood how this happened, that this was not all of a sudden, this was a plan, it's well-funded, it's well-connected, it's worldwide, and that there is a plan to turn that next generation of children into long-term, you know, 
uh, activists and uh, voices for this modern communist movement. Well, but you know, Robbie, we, our detractors would say, well, you guys are talking about conspiracies. That's not really accurate. Uh, you know, if you see on Twitter all the time, that's not really what's happening. Uh, they're not doing that. They're not taking kids without their parents. It, th is there a real agenda? I mean, is it really that they're coming for our kids? That's why we made this movie. I mean, I, I don't think anybody can watch it and walk away and not understand that this is a plan very carefully thought out and that they are absolutely, absolutely doing this at a destructive scale. I've even had many people who don't agree with me politically who thought they would hate this movie, watch it, and they walk away and they go, you know, I might disagree with you on other issues, but this is real. I've been told by the media. We did one thing I think is very important. Say with the issue of children having sex change surgeries. I played a bunch of clips intentionally from the mainstream media over the past two, three years saying there are no children getting anything like a sex change surgery of any kind. We played all of them and then we hard cut to a young lady and I ask her, when did they give you a double mastectomy? And she says, it's the month of my 13th birthday. And she goes on further in that interview to admit that they did almost no look through her mental health, that the process to get it was super fast. She got hormone blockers when she was 12 within one, I think it was less than, you know, an hour, the appointment. And so this is the insanity these kids are facing. And in many places, this is being done at a wide scale. In fact, so wide that organizations like Planned Parenthood that used to depend on the slaughter of children to make their money are now realizing that the mutilation of children may be more profitable because instead of you know a one and done situation, the way they've profited off of the lives of children for so long, now they realize, hey, we could have a patient for life because they're going to have to come back again and again and again. It is a mass medicalization of turning them into long-term lifelong patients. All right, well, uh, you did lay out, what I so appreciate is you laid out the path. Uh, I have two questions. Number one, where can you go back to in history, when did this big aversion to uh, to our children, when did it happen? When did it start and how did it start? If you really want to dig deep, it, it started before any of us were alive because, you know, uh, communism existed in some form even before Karl Marx, just by different names. And the reality of how it comes to be is through chaos, and that chaos is created. It's always created and organized in very specific ways. And uh, separating the child from their parent is paramount to being able to inject one of these authoritarian ideologies that is destructive to values, to faith, to really goodness as a whole. And it's the only way to boost evil up. So you know, what we're seeing now is just a modern version of it where they've realized that the, the best path to separating these kids from their parents and replacing it with the state is issues kids don't want to talk to their parents about. So that's why so much of it is centered around gender ideology, sexual proclivities, you know, and, and what they call kinks, because they know that kids would never talk about these subjects with their parents out of their own free will, very rarely, you know. So, I mean, I think everybody can understand when you were a teenager, it was uncomfortable. You didn't really want to talk about that with your parents. But, you know, um, instead of the parents being the ones to have that conversation with their kids, even if it is uncomfortable, now it's a teacher or somebody who's involved with the state and it's them saying, hey, we'll keep this secret from your parents. We're the, we're the cool person you can trust with these secrets. And then they're teaching them really hedonistic values. And so the separation begins there and it only grows from there because now you've got the state in a position where the child trusts them over their parents and is keeping secrets from their parents with the state. And so that's the beginning of the end. And, and this right. is where we're at. So parents need to decide what we're gonna do. And and I hope everybody chooses to take action in their local community to do everything they can to protect our kids. All right, I'm gonna give you one more question before I go around the horn with everybody to weigh in here. Uh, let's talk about the whole social media aspect because that was highlighted as well in the, uh, the portion of the trailer we played. Uh, TikTok seems to be at the center of a lot of the issues. It does, I mean, it, this is the question I have for every parent watching. If China contacted you tomorrow and they said, hey, can we send a soldier to come and indoctrinate your child for a couple hours a day after school? Would you be okay with that? Every parent watching would think it's absurd. They would definitely not do it. However, we have a ton of parents, including in the Christian church, who are handing a phone with TikTok to their child 
and letting them go and, and cruise the app. And in many cases, they even think that they're doing some kind of parental control without understanding that their child knows a vast amount about technology that they don't and can get past those blocks very easily. And we cover that in the film as well. But TikTok is essentially indoctrinating these kids and using algorithms that will be destructive to the West. We are their enemy, make no mistake about it, and China will do everything they can to subvert the strength of our country and our values. And so um, there's a reason why in their country, and we cover this as well, in their country, their version of TikTok does not allow kids to view the type of degeneracy that is boosted in the algorithm here. So you can't even watch anything like these videos if you're a child or teenager in China. You're only able to watch educational, science-based, you know, productive things for your brain. Here, that's not the case. They hide that content and they boost sexual content and content that, you know, really glorifies crime and hedonistic behaviors. And that's that's the reality. So I really urge people to go to the war on children dot com and watch the film. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me go to Colonel Lieutenant Colonel Allen West. Um, sir, you know what Robbie was describing? I was thinking of, you know, decades ago, you know, the images of planes flying over and dropping propaganda leaflets everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, is that what TikTok is doing to our to our nation? Yeah, absolutely so. I mean, we used to call that information operations and psyops. But, you know, you asked Robbie a question, you know, how far back do you have to go to see when this war on children really started? Well, go back to Judges, chapter 2, verses 10 through 18, when it talks about the children of Israel fell down and started to worship the Baals. And one of the gods of the Baals was the god Moloch, the god of child sacrifice. And then you can advance it, as Robbie talked about, to the modern day socialist communist uh, mentality. And you can see and read the writings of Lenin, Stalin, Hitler, Chairman Mao. I mean, the left has always been targeting our children. And now today, what did you see, see happening in the United States of America? You hear Joe Biden, his wife, uh, Kamala Harris, and the White House spokesperson saying that your children are not your own. And this has already started in several states in the United States of America. If you don't affirm your child's gender, uh, you can lose your child. And most recently, we just had a case in Indiana about that. So we are seeing, you know, the government coming in and disrupting the relationship between the parents and it says in Proverbs 22, 6, that you're supposed to train up a child in the way that they should go so that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it, not the government. Yeah, that's so true. Let me bring in you, John Graves, uh, to the conversation. You know, this is, uh, and, and Lieutenant Colonel Allen West went exactly where I wanted to go. This has always been the battle. We just haven't always been aware of the tactics of the warfare or the psyops, as yeah. uh, Colonel West was saying. Now, John, I mean, this is uh, this is something we've got to, we must overcome. We must take this seriously. And uh, as parents, whether Christian or not, uh, like Robbie was talking about, we've let, we've let, uh, we've given a phone to kids to, as a babysitter instead of watching because we didn't know what was on there. Yeah, and I, I think I, I, I'm grateful that Robbie's done this movie, and I'm, I, I didn't know about it. I'm going to go watch it, so thank you for letting all of us know, because part of the issue here is education, and, and I, I'm glad uh, Bale was talked about by uh, Colonel West. You can go all the way back to Canaan in the land that God promised them. The Canaanites also sacrificed their children. So this is as old as history. Why? Because it's Satan. It's demonic. It's darkness. It's evil. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so our job is we're not ignorant of his devices. They just kill in a new way. They kill people mentally with mental health issues. They're killing them with destroying the, the way their body is made and thinking they're not made in the image of God and that they were born wrong. They're destroying them with other emotional issues issues with technology. So, you know, they're not throwing them off of a cliff and, you know, singing a song and dancing around a fire like they were thousands of years ago, but it's the same death. It's the same destruction. And so we are told in the scriptures, you're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. So I love that you're educating the, the people out there. And I would encourage everybody to go watch it and everybody to go share this. We don't have to lose hope. We don't have to right. say, oh, wring our hands. Everything's terrible. No, we're going to win this. What did they do when God gave them the promised land? They had to get those kind of people out of there. We need that kind of spirit out of our schools, out of our technology, out of our government, because it's killing and destroying our own. And, and there's lots and lots of people that are waking up. There's lots of movements going on. We just need them to use their voice in a protected way to protect these kids and do some good and get those Canaanites out of the land. Wow, so good. All right, let me go back. Before I go back to Robbie, uh, Colonel West, I want to ask you this question again. Um, why is it that the left or the liberal is so aggressive in supporting this type of behavior? Why, 
Because it doesn't make sense. Why are they so aggressive well, in that? Well, it does make sense. If you understand their mentality, if you understand and, and read Saul Alinsky, the, the Communist Manifesto, whatever, the, the most important aspect, the most foundational aspect of a society is the family. And if they can come in and disrupt and destroy the family, then they get that opportunity to have more and more control over you. It's not just the fact that, you know, they want to control what type of, uh, you know, stove you have in, in your home. They want to be able to control every aspect of your family and to include every aspect of the body as well, to, you know, health care. And, and, and now, you know, kids. This can't go out and get a tattoo. They're trying to say you can go out and, and alter your body, which, again, as John Graves articulated, this is undermining the omnipotence right. and the omniscience of God because we were made in his image. And now they're saying, just like with the Tower of Babel, we're just as equal to God as anyone else. That's so good. All right, Robbie, tell me about uh, your, your believer. How, what role did your faith play in the making of this film? Well, I can tell you the film would not have happened if it were not for my belief in God and my relationship with Jesus, because, um, you know, it, this is not an easy film to make in many respects. First of all, there's no very clear outlet to distribute a film like this because the major distributors like Netflix and all those places, they would never touch this and tell the truth to people. So your problem at the outset is how are people going to watch this? You know, because it's not going to be on any of these big services. You're going to have this tiny audience and you're investing this money into it. It's serious money to make a film, you know, and I wanted to do it right because often on our side, films are not well done. They have low production value. So it doesn't matter how good the truth inside of it is. If you can't keep people's attention and tell story in a way that is captivating, you've lost people, you know, and so if you really want to influence people, you've got to do it the right way. And so if I was thinking about it from any sort of logical point of view, it never would have been made. And beyond that, I also had a reluctance to use my skills because I had such a negative association in my head to my previous career in Hollywood directing celebrities because I, I broke in and made it, you know, quote unquote, very young and was nominated for all the big awards and everything. And um, I can see looking back how I was manipulated because I lacked faith at that age in my life. I was just trying to be a success. And, you know, I got to drive a Lamborghini and, you know, have all these big celebrity friends and stuff and live in the fancy gated community and, and everything and have have all those things that people think should mean you're happy and should mean success. And that's really where I got the greatest lesson in life, that none of that means anything. It's it's worthless. That's not where joy is. Joy is in your relationship with Christ. And if you don't find your joy, you know, it's because you're, you're not working on your relationship there with, with what really matters. And so I reached this point where I said, you know what, I submit. I submit to whatever, you know, God wants me to do. And this kept knocking at the door and my wife was encouraging me. I couldn't be luckier to have a godly wife like her that pushes me in that direction and away from the worldly sort of idea of success. And we trusted God. We made the movie. And now, you know, we're uh, less than a month out from a release and about 50 million people have watched the movie. Wow. So that's made it, you know, the most watched documentary of the mm. year and one of the most watched documentaries of all time in less than a month of being out and has, you know, Elon Musk, Donald Trump Jr., Matt Walsh, um, all these people telling people this is the movie that parents and grandparents need to see. So I couldn't write this. I couldn't author this. I couldn't make this myself. And I certainly couldn't get it to 50 million people myself. That's God. This is this yeah. is the work of God. And so that's it's uh, this wouldn't be happening without without my relationship with God. Yeah. All right, Robbie, I have one last question before we move on to the next topic. How do you di how did you do this with your own children? Do you, are, were your children aware of this? Uh, did you talk to them about this film as you were making it? Yeah, you know, my kids are warriors. We, we really believe in communicating really well with your kids about uh, these subjects, because if you don't do it, then you're trusting some teacher or some outsider to teach them these things. So we teach it to them in age appropriate ways and stuff. But like our oldest is 15 and then we've got an 11 year old and a seven year old. And um, so each one of them sort of at a different level understood what was going on. But like, say our son, you know, he is an expert at graphic design. So this logo behind me uh, for the war on children, actually, he he made so like he's he's a part of it in that sense and he even helped edit some of the appropriate interviews um where it made sense because he has really great video skills so we are all that type of family where we all kind of find ways to contribute different ways right. um and they couldn't be prouder and they're they're just awesome yeah that's great uh so good to hear see you can do this you can talk to your kids you can talk to your grandkids you just got to get strong and do it